still on my little FM transmitter, but instead of about 1.8 megahertz, it's now 7 megahertz. I've substituted a 7 megahertz ceramic resonator, actually 7.2 megahertz, and put in a variable capacitor, about 10 to 150 picofarad. When you adjust that, in conjunction with the bias setting on here, you can actually achieve a fairly good amount of frequency agility. But note that if you want the most amount of modulation, it's only at frequencies near the top end of the range, where this variable capacitor is set to minimum. If you don't have a ceramic resonator, then you can use quartz crystals. 7.159 is a fairly common frequency. It's double 3.58. If you put two or more crystals in parallel, and then preferably have a series inductor, maybe 10 microhenry, maybe 22 microhenry, just experiment with values, you'll be able to get more pulling range with that. Possibly not as much as a ceramic resonator, but it will still work enough for you to hear the signal if slope detected on an AM receiver. I'll actually call this really an exciter, not a transmitter. It's low power output, maybe only 20 milliwatts, but even that can be heard hundreds of kilometers away. At least the carrier, in terms of modulation, it's too weak to be hearing the modulation over that sort of distance, but I've certainly heard the carrier over that distance when I've been using the VK5 ARG or VK5 PH Web SDR. I'll give you a demonstration right now. Zooming in on the circuit, quick description again, the microphone amplifier. Don't think I've made any changes from before. The FM modulator, this varies, the, cap the capacitance of this varies, so that allows you to achieve a bit of frequency shift in sympathy with the audio from the microphone. And this bias setting is quite important. Uh, you just set that for best quality audio and there's a bit of interaction between that and the frequency adjustment which is right here. And then we've just gone to a culprit oscillator, pretty standard circuit. That's on 7 megahertz and then one transistor buffer that gives you a bit of amplification, a bit of isolation. There's still a bit of frequency change when you adjust the impedance loading on here so just bear that in mind. It's not, not a serious transmitter, as I said, only a low power exciter, but still a good starting point if you want to experiment with low power voice transmissions on various HF bands, particularly if you can get a ceramic resonator or maybe several crystals on a suitable frequency in parallel. Uh, that will give you a bit of frequency shift also. This is VK3YE Experimental Beacon. This is VK3YE Just using a repeat beacon. player app Seven megahertz and speaker to microphone coupling. QRP. Please email reports to VK3YE at QSL.net. VK3YE Experimental Test Beacon on 7 megahertz. This is VK3YE Under what circumstances is this construction poor? Well, here's an example. Lots of long wires. When I connect the power. Lots of broadband noise.
when you look at this you can see it's a mess and the earthing in particular is terrible if we trace the earth it's around there around there all up here so you don't have a flat copper surface as a ground plane that can be handy to keep circuitry stable and the more transistors you add the worse it gets because the more transistors the more gain and the more feedback and when there's more feedback it's really really hard to tame so yeah building on a wooden block definitely has limitations I might be able to overcome some of them by making the leads shorter but overall you're better off to use a more conventional construction practice if you're building transmitting equipment but four very simple receivers on medium wave or lower HF bands then a block of wood like this can be okay and even if you are careful with the construction an FM wireless microphone that can also work with a block construction like this returning to amateur radio then have i got the book for you getting back into amateur radio fills you in on all the things that you've missed while you've been away from the hobby available in both paperback and ebook you can find out more on my website vk3ye.com that's getting back into amateur radio details at vk3ye.com or just search the title on Amazon.